This sticky, sweltering heat can be overwhelming and dangerous. I've definitely been tired. I felt um, really drained, felt uh, not even sweating anymore because I'm overheated, um, felt dizzy. Our bodies start shutting down when our core temperature rises above 37 degrees Celsius. During the day, the key is to chill out. But even if you're healthy and fit, nighttime heat can affect whether your body's core temperature actually drops. On muggy nights, the issue is not just the temperature, but it's the humidity. And that affects our body's ability to evaporate our sweat off of our body. And so we retain that heat as we're lying there overnight. And in fact, that's the reason why a lot of heat-related deaths take place through the overnight. When heat and humidity spike at night, it's important to spot the signs of heat stress. It's the symptom progression that we're really looking at, along with the body temperature. Heat emergencies can have three stages, starting with heat cramps, headache, dizziness and nausea. Heat exhaustion piles on heavy sweating, muscle cramps and fainting. These symptoms can all be treated with shade, water and a cool shower. But left unchecked, the body's temperature can hit 40 degrees. That's heat stroke. No more sweating, behavioral changes or confusion sets in, along with spasms or seizures. This is an emergency. Our lungs can have fluid on them, what we call pulmonary edema. The ability for our blood to clot normally is affected. So really there's multiple organs that are affected when temperature rises so high. Young children and the elderly need extra care. Their bodies have a harder time sweating and regulating their core temperature. Recognizing heat sickness and acting quickly can be life-saving. Christine Birak, CBC News, Toronto. There have already been deaths linked to heat over the past week, two in Manitoba. A reminder that those heat warnings are really about saving lives.